No. Hello, and welcome to the Tired Craftsman channel. If you followed me for any amount of time, you may know that I make gadgets occasionally. What you may not know is that when I post them on Instagram, people often make comments about how I should make them wrist-mounted and fire them off my arm. And today, that's what I'm going to do. For the views. This, of course, isn't the first wrist-mounted thing that I've built. I've actually done quite a few. But this is going to be a little different. This one is going to be more of a prototype, not a polished design. You know, I've got an idea and I want to test the concept out and see if it will work the way I imagine that it will, but it's it's gonna be that, just a little proof of concept. So, it's kind of a roundabout way of saying that, uh, she ain't gonna be pretty. But, you know, it doesn't have to be. It just has to work. So, with that in mind, I'm going to try to build some sort of wrist-mounted slingshot crossbow hybrid. You know, nothing too high-powered, you know, nothing too dangerous. I'm not going to show you how to build a dangerous link, because, frankly, we can't trust you. But, hopefully by the end, we'll have a functional gadget, and maybe we'll learn a thing or two along the way. Okay, let's get started. For this project, I'm going to use some thin plywood for the base for like most of the body and stuff. It's a subpar building material when you're trying to do something like this, but this is just a prototype. You know, I don't want to use the nice stuff on something that might not work out. We'll see. Personally, I've never really been one to like draw out a design and then try to execute it. It's just for some reason I've just I've just never been like that. I like to just build it and kind of see what happens. Maybe not the smartest thing, but you know, it's 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 my process. It's how I work through things. Anyway, let's uh, take a thinner piece of plywood and I'm going to make the trigger. I guess the trigger, the release mechanism, sort of the trigger, you know, the part that's going to make the thing fire. And while we're at it, we'll cut some notches at the back of what's going to be the body of this thing so that I can hook the rubber band that's going to be what powers the slingshot. You know, I just realized this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you. I didn't really give you any context, so let me explain my thought process on how this is going to work. I'm going to get, take two pieces of plywood, I'm going to put a thinner piece between them that's going to be slightly skinnier to have kind of like a, like a tunnel or a trench down it for the bolt to fly down. And then the little trigger thing is going to go at the back there, and when the rubber band is strung into those notches, this will get pulled and that'll push the rubber band up off the notch and that'll release it and hopefully fire the bolt down the trench and then it'll shoot. God, I sound like a moron right now. Sorry, it's been a long week. Anyway though, they're, uh, these boards are warped and they're pinching the little trigger release thing at the end. So I'm going to grind them just a little bit to give them a bit more, give a bit more space in there for the thing to swing freely. And I'm also going to round it off a little bit because you don't want any sharp corners where you don't need them. You know, that'll make things uncomfortable. So we'll smooth it up and as you can see now there's plenty of room for that thing to move freely. We don't want, I guess, a lot of friction. You know, we want it to just flip when we need it to. And then I decided to sand up these corners a little bit on these notches because those corners could be just sharp enough to tear up a rubber band. And if the rubber band breaks, then the thing doesn't work. So let's fix that. And since I already got the sandpaper out anyway, I figured let's sand the top down here. You know, give it a nice smooth trail for the bolt to travel down. You know, I guess splinters and stuff would probably slow it down a bit. So, you know, couldn't hurt. Now, as I mentioned, this is supposed to be wrist mounted. So the best way I think to do that is to tie a rope to that trigger back there and run it down under the... I guess the length of the device and tie it around my finger and so when I bend my wrist it pulls the trigger and it fires. So to do that I made this little piece in the middle a bit thinner because I want a channel going uh, on the underside of it so I can run that rope down it and then when I mount it to the thing that's going to be holding it to my arm that'll make a nice little kind of like tube that it's going through to keep it in there and it'll be a nice little contained trigger system. And I'm just using some wood glue to hold this bad boy together. In hindsight, I probably should have just screwed this together because, again, it's a little prototype thing, you know. I don't need it to to last long term. But mm, mm, hindsight's 2020, isn't it? And actually, uh, after I clamped it down, I realized I didn't want to wait hours for this to dry. So I ended up putting some screws through it anyway because, you know, I want to get this video done. But, yeah, if you're, if you're doing a... Uh, a nice project glue it together if you're doing a thing just to test a concept just screw it together it's fine and then with that revelation i just screwed a cross beam onto the front this is going to be where we mount the rubber bands on um i didn't want to make it too long because if you're wearing it i don't want it to be super cumbersome with like a big you know 
beam sticking out both sides like getting all in your way so i tried to make it as small as i could while still being kind of comfortable and hopefully this will be enough for the rubber bands to work because i'm worried about it not like it's going to lose tension as it snaps down toward the end there because you see how it's just hanging all loose there at the end and i'm worried that, that could cause a problem because like with crossbows the string stays taut the whole time so we'll see what happens you know maybe it'll work maybe it won't it worked mostly. It worked mostly. I wouldn't waste your time with a complete failure of a gadget. It, 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 it mostly works, but it could have, there's improvements that could be made. So you like that right there. The rubber band seems to get caught on one side of the notch area. That's valuable data right there. Now we got to solve for it, which could be a pain, but luckily I have an idea. Oh, sure. Now you want to work. Well, too bad, baby. I already found someone else. But before I get to that, let's string up this trigger and do a little test to make sure that the, the concept works because that would be a shame. And thankfully that seemed to work just fine. There wasn't really any resistance. I was worried that maybe, you know, it being at like an angle like that, it would be, it would put like a weird direction on it that it's being pulled but no it worked really smooth so okay one less thing to worry about but as you can see the rubber band is still getting stuck on one side so we're gonna have to do something about that because the way it's currently performing isn't nearly reliable enough for me to be content with it and i do have a solution for that but uh when i'm going through the footage here it seems that i didn't fix that until the end so i do have a plan but before we get to that Let's uh, make a thing to hold the bolt onto it while you're wearing it so that you can walk around with it loaded if you wanted to, which is a horrible idea, by the way. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but, you know, if you did want to be reckless, you know, then uh, let's, let's make a little thing to hold the bolt on. I'm going to use a piece of PVC pipe, and I'm going to use a heat gun to flatten it out. Now, when you're heating up PVC pipe, be very careful, because if this burns, it's, like, super toxic. So... Do it in a ventilated area, keep an eye on it. If it starts to change color or anything, just stop immediately. But if you keep the uh, heat gun moving and you know don't, don't go too hard with it, it should be fine and then it'll get soft and then you can kind of work it and reshape it a little bit. Now the plastic is pretty hot right now and you don't have to use your hand to do this, but you know, I'm sort of a badass so I do. But you know, you could use like a, a towel or a shirt or something like that if, to handle it and you know, shape it like that, you know. If you want to be a wimp, I'm just kidding. Just, you know, do whatever's comfortable for you. You know, you don't got to impress anybody. See right here, I'm rolling it with another piece of PVC pipe because I don't want to touch it anymore because it is really hot. And then I'm just going to take that template that you saw me playing with earlier, trace it, and cut it out. And then I will use the heat gun to shape it a bit more until we have a nice little thing to hold the bolt on. I don't know what it's called. If you do, let me know in the comments. And that looks secure enough. You know, you don't want it to be so strong that it'll impede the traveling of the bolt when the rubber band propels it, but you don't want it just falling off. So yeah, looking good. And then I'm gonna use this template and leftover bucket from my wrist mounted rocket launcher video, go check that out, to make a sort of ambrace that I'm gonna attach this onto and that is how I will wear it. And of course it probably would have been better to run this rope down that little channel there before I attached the arm brace on, but you know, sometimes it's fun to do things the hard way. I could just unscrew it and you know, run it through there then put it back on, but it's already on and I'm not taking it off. I'm just, I'm not doing it, I won't. And now I'm gonna drill some holes so that I can attach a strap on. Dear, dear God, phrasing. I'm going to put a strap on it so that I can wear it on my arm. And to do that, I'm gonna use some aluminum rivets. I go into this in a couple other videos, you know, so if you want a more in-depth thing on how rivets work, uh, 
my rocket launcher video, as I mentioned before, that one has it, and uh, an armor one that I did where I made uh, armor out of buckets. But uh, yeah, the gist is you put a washer on it, uh, stick the the st I'm leaving that in. I don't care. Stick the rivet through the things that you want to attach together. Washer on the other side, rivet gun, crimp it together, and then you got an attached thing. Also, you're not going to believe this, but after all that build-up to the solution to the rubber band getting caught, I realized I didn't actually film the first time I made a change to that. There's a second one later if you want to see. It's, it's really simple. You'll, you'll understand it immediately. But uh, I just replaced the middle of the three rubber bands that I tied together with a piece of rope because the rope doesn't stretch and it's less frictiony than a rubber band would be. See it right there? Look at that. And it works a lot better. I haven't had a snagging issue since I did that. So let's do some test firing now and see how this works. That's actually not bad. That's about 10 feet away right there. And yeah, I think it's pretty good. Again, this is just a toy. Like I mentioned, I don't want to make anything actually dangerous. I mean, if it pointed at someone's eye, it's still pretty dangerous. But, you know, that's besides the point. But that's not bad for, for a start. Let's see if we can make it a bit stronger, though. Now you might be saying, TC, how are we going to make that stronger? I'll tell you. Instead of putting one rubber band on each side of the rope, we'll put two, because that is twice the power. That's how physics works. And then we'll fire this again, see if we can get some penetration this time. In the box. Penetration in the box. Oh god, that still sounds bad. Uh, we're going to shoot into the cardboard and see if it sticks. And that is a considerable difference. Well, yeah, I mean, twice the strength. It should be. Yeah, that's from about 10 feet away again. And as you can see, it's going right in, having no trouble, really. So, cool. Let's try from like 15 feet away, see what that does. Okay, so not, not, not strong enough to penetrate there, but you wanna, you wanna see what happens if it's sharp? Yeah, let's, let's make it sharper, let's see what happens if it's sharp. Okay, so it looks like it did penetrate, just not strong enough to really like stick the landing there. But uh, I did just want to make a toy. I didn't want to make something dangerous. But uh, you want to see what happens if we add three rubber bands? Yeah, let's, let's let's just let's do three. Then we'll stop there. See what happens. Okay, so here we are with three rubber bands on each side for a total of six. Now, I'm not going to wear it this time because drawing it back was kind of scary. I feel like we're reaching the limit of what this thing can handle. So let's let it rip. <laughs> well, damn, that was horrifying. Yeah, look at that, went right in. Okay, okay, so that's pretty cool. Well, I think we're gonna stop it there. That seems dangerous enough. So uh, let's uh, do a quick debrief. Yeah, so all in all, I'm happy with the first result. Again, this was just a prototype to test the idea. Um, there were a couple issues that I found with it. One being that the uh, string, every now and then when you would fire it, would skip over the bolt and just kind of misfire the whole thing. I think the reason for that is, like I mentioned earlier, is that the tension is lost on the rubber band once it's released. So then, you know, because it's, it's tight, and then as soon as it's released, it just kind of, I think, is free to wobble wherever it wants to. Um, that's probably why crossbows work, and this doesn't all the time. Because, you know, like I said, the thread on the crossbow is always taut, even when it's not pulled back. But... Yes, yeah, so that's one thing that maybe is worth looking into for the next design, the next version of this. Um, and the other thing is just being a wrist-mounted thing. It's not the most practical thing in the world. It's a bit difficult to load, um, especially when you put more rubber bands on. Because, like, I kind of had to, with the three rubber bands on it, I had to kind of hold the bolt back here to pull it back enough to get it in there. So, that's something to think about. You know, you can't get too much power out of this type of thing and have it still be useful. But, you know, wrist-mounted things are never super practical. It's more for the cool factor. And, you know, I think shooting bolts off your arm is pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. Again, adjustments could be made, improvements, but I think it was time spent well enough. And, uh, that's gonna about do it. So, thank you for watching and have a good night. <laughs>